do you do mostly option trades or do you have a, a combination of owning stocks and options or what do you well there, there are a lot of really you know expert traders in the group here uh, I but for me personally so I'm, and I think that everybody does a number of different things um, but Personally, I do mostly options. A little bit of stock, but mostly options. I just like the way that they work. It's just my comfort zone. My what I, you know, I like the complexity of it. It's more fun for me, and that's why I do it. Yeah. Just a comment, and I'm new. Yeah. The difference yeah. between an, in my my opinion, is if you're if you're an option trader, your the concept of trade means that I'm not in here long. I'm not. I'm in here for a visit. Uh, a position. A trader that's playing long is playing longer periods or put or buying stocks unless you're trading I mean you could do the same thing I'm an e-mini trader and I couple it with options but what I look for for instance in his trade and in, in this process if, if I play the spy I day trade it or I maybe do two days because I'm looking for the lowest point in the day okay to go long and I'm looking for the highest point to go short so I can be a day trader and trade the spy and hold it longer because I'm I'm tying up, putting my money out, and saying, "As in yesterday, it was down to in my in my terminology, 1160." And so the concept of buying it here on a long play was logical for me. And I'm, I'm putting out a couple thousand dollars, and I'm playing an option, but I don't have to get out of the option. And when it rallied at the back end of the day, I could get out of it and make a thousand dollars on a two thousand dollar play. That's comfortable for me. But I, but I consider myself purely a trader. I don't. I mean, I have stocks and portfolios. I have to be honest, I don't even look at them. I, I hope they're okay. <laughs> I try to get out when I see they're up. You know. But, I mean, I think there's a mentality to being an option trader or an e-mini trader or a trader in general. I mean, when anybody's playing these, we're usually playing them for a period of time. And the quickest we can get out of them, like where I was listening to the oil today, I mean, if the oil went skyrocketing back to 83, I'm out. I mean, if I was playing that as, as a... A spread. I'm I'm getting my money off the table because it could come down to seventy again. Why well, take the risk? I'd buy myself out. I don't know if that meant anything, but I just no. Thank you. Thank also, you. in stocks, you can tie up a lot of cash. Right. In an option, you can yeah. you get a leverage of control four or five to one leverage basically, and you you're not tying tying up as much money. For example, Apple's at around two hundred dollars a share. So I mean, just to buy one share of Apple is going to cost you two hundred bucks. A hundred shares which is one contract. Yeah, plus yeah, you can so. do synthetic spreads that will, you know, increase your leverage as well. Like you could do a, a collar on um, Apple where you have the same deltas as if you were to buy the stock with, with uh, substantially less investment on the trade. Right. So, so if, you, if you bought an at-the-money call, sold an at-the-money put, if you were expecting Apple to go up, that's equivalent to buying 100 shares of Apple, but you only would have maybe about a $5,000. I don't know where Apple is right now, but approximately that probably in margin requirement. So versus having to buy 100 shares at the whatever dollar amount Apple is trading per share. So the much more efficient use of capital and less risk if you know what you're doing. I mean, options, a lot of people think options are risky. They are risky if you don't know what you're doing, uh, which most people who get into option trading don't know anything about options at all. They just think it's, you know, it's lower risk because there's less money to invest, and so your money goes a longer way. But if you don't understand volatility and how different types of options work, you can lose a lot of money. But if you understand it, like most of the people in this room are either do understand or on the path to understanding it, then it's, a much safer way to trade. So if you look here on the VIX, what's interesting also is, you know, and, and the VIX you're going to have lots of little false alarms because it, it, it's very volatile indicator, obviously. So, um, but you've got a shooting star pattern, candlestick pattern, right? At, um, and I drew kind of a resistance line from some years ago, uh, which. I just drew a little support line here. And that support line was right at where the candle, the shooting star pattern was. And, and for those of you who don't understand, candlesticks, uh, a hammer is typically uh, the opposite of what a shooting star pattern is. And you find that toward the bottom of reversals, where a shooting star, you typically find the top of reversals. So, so here you have a long 
um, you know, these are these candles. The, the wick is called the shadow. So there's a long shadow above it and a small body of the candle right here is typically potentially an indicator of a reversal pattern and it's happening at a, at a resistance level. So at the same time that we saw the handle patterns of the markets. So potentially volatility is, is reversing and volatility has an inverse of a relationship to market activity. So I look at different volatility indices, um, the RVX, which correlates to the Russell. Here we've got the same. And you're going to see, when I see patterns that dramatic, you're going to see it on all the different mm -hmm. things, like we've got the shooting star there. Mm -hmm. This is the uh, VXD, which is the uh, volatility index for the Dow. And we've got the X time, which is the volatility index for the NASDAQ. So your point is that the shooting stars were across all the indexes? Yeah, we're all, all across all the volatility indexes, yeah. So you don't know where the reversal is going to stop now? It's, it was obviously a reversal, but now... No, I mean, I don't have a strong opinion. I have, you know, I have gut feelings, but I don't have any strong opinion based on technical analysis at this point. I just know where headed, yeah. Um, except that the markets are, you know, sideways is slightly bullish, but I, I'm not really, you know, I would, I personally wouldn't be taking a bullish trade at this point. Um, but I might have taken one when I saw this pattern for a short term, you know, very short term bullish uh, move. That doesn't, you know, mean specific stocks are going to behave a little bit differently, even though most stocks will follow the markets to some degree, but, you know, so yeah. individual stocks may have slightly different behavior patterns, but but overall, I wouldn't be taking a taking a trade on you know a, a strongly bullish trade at this point. I'd be mostly looking at maybe a sideways trade of some kind. What about gold? Okay. Yeah, that's really ELD cool. or something else. Sure, whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay. There's gold. So the dash line signifies a breakout, and then we've actually come back and I mean, test it. tested it. Going in, well, it's Almost. headed towards the support. Yeah. yeah. And you've got, uh, at the same time, we've got a shooting star there. Do you mean a hammer? I'm sorry, yeah, it's a hammer. hammer. Yeah. An upside down sorry. shooting star. Right? <laughs> But it's kind of going in a channel, so it's at uh, lower high, so it could, could keep going down. It could. I mean, it would, potentially we've got a little bit of a resistance point here that we're coming up to, yeah. potentially. It's a flag. If the dollar strengthens and the gold should go down. Right. Yeah. So, well, yeah. If you look at those different factors, it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, sure. back in the crash that we had. Nothing's hundred percent. Yeah. All right. All of this worked perfectly until the crash that we had a couple of years ago, and then it, it hasn't correlated all the time as, as well since then. But, but theoretically, if you have, if the euro U.S. dollar is, uh, if you're finding that that's near a support level, potentially, and you're starting to get some hammer patterns and. Uh, the technical indicators suggest that potentially we could be going up a little bit. I don't know yet. It looks like more sideways to me. Yeah. But, you know, potentially we've hit a support level. 